The results are in, and the next red ring is... Google Glass was once seen as the future, but now it's mostly a forgotten project. So whatever happened to Google's smart glasses? Well, let's take a look back and see. In the new decade of smartphones, just as technology kept getting better and better every year, Google looked ahead into a different future. In an attempt to make a product that could be as revolutionary as the iPhone 2G was, the idea of course was a pair of smart glasses. This idea came from another project from 2009 which involved smart contact lenses which some of you may have already heard of. Glass became the first project for Google in their X department which was responsible for the self-driving car program Waymo and Project Loon, a research balloon which helps provide internet connections for those who can't access it. The first Google Glass prototypes really do look different. The first one literally appears to have a phone attached onto a pair of glasses. Also, you need to carry a backpack which contains a laptop inside in order for the device to work. By 2011, Google was able to remove the laptop and phone portion and add the mini holographic projector and glass. And finally, in 2012, Google would unveil Glass to the public with a video which is now unlisted. It shows off the various things you can do with Glass and well, it looked amazing, especially for 2012. I remember watching this in awe, sharing it to family and friends, and everyone was just, like, blown away by it. So I know there may be some of you that have already seen this video long, long ago, but there are some people who may be unfamiliar, younger, or maybe want a refresh of what Glass really is. So basically, Glass does function a lot like a smartwatch or a phone, except it's a pair of glasses. You can take photos, videos, get directions, send messages, play music, yeah, all that good stuff. That same year, also, there was a patent for Glass to be able to unlock itself with your eyes. Of course, the reaction to Glass was by far huge. It definitely was something everyone believed would be revolutionary. In 2013, to start off, Google created the Glass Explorers program, which allowed people to apply to test out Glass. All they had to do was write a small post on either Twitter or Google Plus about what they would do with their pair of glasses. 8,000 people were selected and would pay $1,500 for a pair. A year later, in May of 2014, Glass went on sale to the public for $1,500. It was still considered a prototype in beta, but because of that price tag and because time went on and people began to think about it more, Glass slowly became a laughing stock. Channels and TV shows like Smosh, The Daily Show, The Simpsons, and many many more began to make it satirical, and eventually you were seen as some dork wearing them. Okay Glass, search avoid being bullied for wearing Google Glass. <laughs> Google's response to this was to attempt to make it look a little bit more like a regular pair of glasses, according to this patent in 2014. But others didn't enjoy the idea that a user could wear glass and have a camera pointing at people all the time. By late 2014, out of the 16 developers that were working on apps for glass, 9 discontinued their work. This was a response to glass demand seeming to just fall. Even the co-creator of glass, Babak Parviz, quit Google entirely and started working at Amazon. In 2015, Google pulled Glass from the public. Although they said it's not dead yet, later in the year, Google started Project Aura, which would continue Glass just reshaping its purpose. Two years later in 2017, Glass was announced as being an enterprise edition sort of product. In other words, Google was making this more for the employee side of things. Recently this year, Google released a video showing Glass Enterprise 2, and it seems to be aimed a lot more at the medical and industrial type field. Boeing and General Electric were two companies that seemed interested in Glass for their employees. This sort of makes it appears that Google is trying to compete now with Microsoft's HoloLens, which is also tailored for employees. Anyways though, how come Glass did fail, even though it seemed pretty cool? Well, there isn't really a point to own one. It can do everything that your phone can do, and smartwatch, and it's extremely expensive even for today's times. Back then, remember that a new smartphone costed anywhere from $700 to $800, but glass was $1,500. It truly is just a smartphone on glasses, and it's also literally was at one point. And also there's another thing I didn't even realize was a problem, and it is... The battery. It literally lasts 45 minutes. I actually had the honor of wearing glass three years ago when I visited YouTube Space in New York. From what I can remember from my experience, the screen isn't obstructive, but it's not something that I could look at all day. And when I was wearing it, I wasn't as excited as when I first saw it. Yeah, there isn't really a point to 
having one. Now companies still do seem to be interested in AR and smart glasses, so it could be that glass was actually too early. Maybe it just wasn't ready for its time. There's a company out there called North that created smart glasses called Focals. These are also being backed by Amazon, and they only cost $600. They also look a lot more like glasses, and they're really simplistic. But it definitely doesn't have the excitement and hype that glass once had. There's also the rumor flying around for a few years that Apple may make their own smart glasses, but we'll have to see. So it seems like now smart glasses are not the future for consumers' interest. Whether that's a now thing or a forever thing, time will tell. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching and um, okay Google, I'll see you later. Goodbye.